and another paper more sorry about it's that. being recorded no uh, problem yeah, at all no okay. problem at all and uh, a more recent paper with uh, with jesus castillo manolo gonzalez and pierluigi papini that is about to, to appear. But this project actually uh, is, is, is a little bit older and I'll try to also mention some other, mm, uh, some other directions. So for today, X will stand for infinite dimensional Banach space. Everything will be, I think, infinite dimensional and S of X will be the sphere. So let us start with something extremely simple that we often teach. Um, the Ries lemma, yes, it says that, well, in infinite dimensions, the sphere or the ball is not compact for a very uh, simple reason, namely, you can find a closed, infinite and discrete subset. And actually, more than that, for any theta, you can find, let's, let me call it a, a theta separated sequence. So it is a very basic standard result. And the question is, what kind of theta you can uh, expect. So can you do better? And in general, of course, we know that there are plenty of examples. However, in full generality, the first result was uh, appeared surprisingly late in the in the 70s by Cliff Cotman, who proved, well, yes, you can do better, you can find a, a sequence so that the, the mutual distances will be, uh, let's say, uh, bigger than one, but it, does, it didn't really follow that the infimum of, of those distances is also bigger than one. Um, Kotman's uh, proof was, uh, let me say, extremely convoluted, although natural, because he appealed to, uh, to, to, to this um, continuous Ramsey theory, Allen took topology and so on. Although it turns out that this is all unnecessary, I'll comment uh, on that in a moment. Uh, so in that case, just for simplicity, I'll be calling such a sequences one plus separated, where we understand um, what it means. And we have we have a, a significant improvement, also very much Ramsey theoretic, uh, a theorem proved by uh, by by John Elton and Ted O'Dell, which says that not only you can find such a sequence so that the distances are bigger than one, but but depending on the but there is a positive number that depends only on the space, uh, so that you can find a, a one plus uh, separated sequence. And here, this proof is also that the original proof was also uh, Ramsey theoretic, and I think to some extent unavoidable until very recently. But this is a uh, this is not a story that I will comment uh, on later. So the history of that uh, is that there was this proof by, by Elton and Odell, and quite recently, oh, so in this talk, actually, when I was preparing uh, my presentation, I noticed that I'll be appealing either to results or mentioning a number of speakers for that seminar, either people who have already given their talk or who will give in the future. So I, I wonder if you can count the, the correct number of people that I'll mention. Um, yes, so let's say it's a, it's, it's a competition for you to, to, to figure out the number of speakers that I'll be mentioning today. Okay, so uh, very recently, I, well, very recently, maybe Bunyamin can tell me, there was this paper by uh, by you, by Ted O'Dell, uh, by Dan, and by uh, by Ben, yeah, Zhao, where this transactions paper, where you essentially uh, also give a give a, give a proof of, of the Elton O'Dell theorem, uh, but also it 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 uses um, it uses Ramsey theoretic methods uh, in disguise. But in such a gen generality, it seems that such methods are um, inevitable. So I think that was paper from four years ago. Can you remind me, please? Uh, the, the transaction. Yeah, it's been. I, I don't know when exactly it appeared, but it's been. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's been a long time. You wrote it. Uh, it, okay, it took long me. Uh, yeah, it probably took us a uh, long time to write it. But yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, uh, so then, let us say we had another proof of the of the Elton O'Dell theorem. And I was, I must say that I was puzzled by, uh, by those kind of problems way before uh, the, the papers that I mentioned. And actually, uh, I very much uh, liked reading uh, Joe Diestel's book, Sequences and Series in Banach Spaces. I hope that the, the, the copyright police will not catch me for 
presenting this snapshot. But I think it is um, what is remarkable about uh, uh, about this um, this snapshot is that it is on page three of. Uh, or even page two, maybe yeah. Either page two or three of uh, of Joe Distel's book, where he presents a completely elementary argument that relies only on on the Hanbana theorem, actually the existence of norming functionals. Um, completely elementary and uh, like ten lines. So Kaufman theorems uh, could be reduced to something uh, very simple. Uh, he says that um, he blames uh well the, the, the this proof was uh, uh was was presented to uh to joe by bob huff and he he credited tom starbit for it um yes so for for cotman's theorem you, we have a significant improvement in terms of the complexity of the proof so well the question about separation in the sphere and in the ball is uh uh, that's the same question, and actually here is a, an extremely simple lemma that um, you could use as a as an exercise for your students. Um, actually, for even for real analysis, because it, it it is true in all dimensions, finite or or infinite, which essentially says that if if the distance between two unit vectors is is at least one, then so is the project. Then the projection does not decrease. It's it's geometrically it's it's obvious, and it follows from convexity of the of the function x minus ty, uh, which is a function of, of t. So it is an extremely simple convexity argument that tells you that if it is more convenient to you to, to work with the ball, work with the ball. If you prefer the sphere, work with the with the sphere. It does not matter uh, at all. Um, I would be interested in, in actually uh, getting a proper reference uh, to that. Um, when in the paper with Tomek Kohanek, we of course well we needed it, so we proved well we, we gave this. But um, I was, I would very much appreciate a proper uh, uh, reference. So uh, here I'm mentioning this paper because this was my first paper on the um, in that area. Although we we started with non-separable stuff, so instead of trying to to quantify the the the, the distance. Well, we were interested in the case where, okay, we look at distances bigger than one, or at least, or, or even one plus epsilon, but in non-separable spaces. So um, now this paper and another paper of, of, of Petr Hayek, Tommaso, and myself, well, we, we have some progress in this, let's say, non-separable direction. But the, 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 the general question, if you like, non-separable spaces still persists. So if you have a non-separable Banach space, um, can you find, let's say, an uncountable one plus separated set? So if you assume something, then by one of the theorems, you could probably, you could probably uh, derive the result. Uh, I think I cannot really think of a potential counterexample. So I, I do not even know a space for which I wouldn't know the answer. Um, but still, in full generality, this question is open. Um, as a maybe teaser, let me tell you that if the space is crazily large in terms of density, then you can do it. But um, the, the, the problem is with spaces with density uh, alpha one. But in general, this is not what I'm going. This is well for today. This is not what I'm going to delve into. Um, today, the talk is is completely is completely separable. So just a trivial remark that um, this problem. It's reducible to subspaces because we we can always take the the closed linear span of the of a of a sequence of interest, and also to quotients uh, because if you have one plus separated one plus epsilon one plus epsilon that's important separated sequence, then you can have one plus epsilon minus separated lift. Also a trivial exercise, but it is good to 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 mention this and um, just to realize that. Uh, Essentially in, essentially, in pretty much every situation, we can say something when we when we look at some 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 Banach space. The, the difficulty is again in showing something uniformly for all Banach spaces at once. But as long as you assume something, um, the problem is not is not that difficult. And indeed, so if you have let's say LP, then the standard the the, the, the unit vector basis of LP is two to one p one over p uh, separated. Um, and actually, what is maybe more uh, interesting is 
it's not hard, but not I think not not obvious. Is but it is the best you can you can get in in, in LP. So that's the best uh, separation constant that you can uh, expect. Well, in C0, um, also uh, there is a trivial well, example of such a sequence that gives you two separation, namely a sequence of, of ones followed by minus one, followed by infinitely many zeros. Obviously, this sequence is, is two separated. Uh, so in, in C0, there is, there, is nothing, uh, there is nothing to do. So if you have either C0 or L1, embedded as, a, uh, as, a, as an isomorphic, isomorphically in, in, in a Banach space, well, you can still retrieve this, inf this, this piece of information and, and get the result by James' non-distortion theorem, because it gives you well, almost a copy of, 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 of L1 as C0, and because in, in, in both spaces you have two separated sequences, you can have two minus uh, separated sequences in the in any isomorphic uh, copy, and 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 in that case, uh, that that's fine. So, if if you have zero or one, you have actually uh, separated sequences that are almost maximal. Almost, I mean, the distance is almost maximal, namely almost two. And there is a a, a very nice. I, I like it so much. Um, there is a, a beautiful result, not too hard to prove, by Krichka and Prus. Um, who show that if your space is non-reflexive, well, then you can have a fifth root of four separated sequence in the in the sphere. Well, it looks a, little, a bit esoteric, although it is not, because this arises as a, as a certain geometric means of of very naturally constructed averages of vectors that itself that themselves. Um, um, have norm close to, to, to four. Um, so the main ingredient in the theorem is, is James, uh, one of numerous characterizations of reflexivity. This one is due to James, um, so that if your space is non-reflexive, um, then for a theta in the unit interval, you will find two sequences, one in the, the space, the other in the, in the dual, I mean both in the, in the balls, such that, um, well, the action, so, so up to up to certain place uh, when you evaluate, you have theta. But from well, but 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 if you go if you go further, then you have uh, you have zero. So that's that's the main ingredient. And once you know this, the, the proof is actually elementary um, modulo this this result. But it's it, it's very beautiful. So the question would be, can you prove a, a symmetric version of this theorem? But I will mention in a second. What do I mean by a symmetric version? But maybe more uh, tantalizing question is, can you improve uh, the estimate? Because it doesn't look uh, optimal. I mean, uh, I, I discussed this with, uh, with both authors and they say, no, this, the, 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 they reach this constant because it, is, it naturally appears in the proof, uh, but they do, they do not believe it is, it is optimal. So can you, um, can you, can you improve it? Um, I don't know. Um, I find it quite tantalizing. Okay, so what do I mean by symmetric separation? Is this so? Um, not only I, I require that the distance of the vector is, is bigger than something, but also I want x plus that vector to be bigger than something. And with with Petr and with with Tommaso, uh, actually, uh, okay, we what we what we did was getting a, a symmetric version of, of Kotman's theorem. Um, so yes, indeed, you can have one plus, uh, one plus uh, separated uh, sequence in a symmetric way. If you assume something, if, if the space is a, is a Banach lattice or it's a separable dual, um, then you can have symmetric separated sequence. And if you have, let us say, finite cotype, then you can say something about about epsilon. So, um, so 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 um, you could get as close to two to one over the the, the cotype as you as you wish. So this is based on a, on some some reductions. I will explain them in a second. But just to to recall for those who are maybe not familiar 
So <laughs> code type is like type, but in the other direction. Um, but more seriously, well, we average on average we we expect that um, the norm of the of the of a linear combination of uh, of sine changed vectors, um, well, will behave uniformly with respect. So that there is a number q such that one over q squared is this is this bound. It's like um, uh, parallelogram law in one direction on average. So, uh, so uh, yes. But finally, uh, Thomas proved beautifully that there is a, a Tomaso. Sorry, Tomaso proved beautifully that uh, there is a there is a symmetric version of the elton odell theorem. Uh, let me comment on that uh, later. And uh, so I'll return to, to discussing what is in that paper and comparing it to the previous paper. But for now, maybe let me briefly justify um, this co-type business. Why? Because, well, the title is, is, well, we want to quantify something. And having finite co-type is an isomorphic property. So whatever renorming of a space I, I take, well, I still have such an estimate. For example, um, if you take any renorming of, of, of LP, well, you still have such a such a such a estimate. So, well, we've noticed that actually this problem, if your space contains C0 or L1, well, then you use uh, James non-distortion and and you're done. But if you contain also LP, then you're also done because of of another reason. So this this co-type this co-type business. So we will actually see that it is not really um, uh, directly related to co-type, but to something weaker. So actually, this is uh, the proof is easy, so it is presentable here in a, in a five minutes. So. Let us just recall this notion of, of being uh, of satisfying um, lower LQ inequality. So let us say that a normalized basic sequence um, satisfies a lower LQ or, or Q estimate. If uniformly we can bound the LQ norm of, let's say, finitely supported uh, the vectors with the norm of, of, of of the linear combination. So in other words, what does it mean? Uh, that it, you can inject your space into continuously and um, into LQ. So um, let me present a, a, an ad hoc notion that uh, actually was coined, a similar version was coined in the paper with Tomek Kohanek. So what I'm going to present is to present a proof to a okay so the same proof the same proof worked for two different completely different theorems one was about some non separable uh, super reflexive spaces and here i have a proof about something very separable but still the idea of the proof is um is similar so let me just for the sake of this proof say that an operator from a space that has a basis uh, and by x n I denote, let's say the uh, the the, the fine the, the co-initial projection, the co-initial subspaces associated to the to the bases, the tails. Let me say that an operator from x um, to L q is bounded by a pair. If well, the norm of t is bounded by the the second number, and uniformly we have the bound of the restrictions to the to the tails to be bounded by let's say the first number. So I think it's it's pretty natural, and the the, the, the really the, the the main theorem behind this co-type of business is the following is the following observation that if X contains such a sequence, then the uh, the, the the symmetric aha I, I still have not really introduced this symbol, so it says that you can find a symmetrically separated sequence um, that is two to the power one over q minus separated. So you can get to one minus two, two, two to the power one over q as close as you, um, as you want. Uh, okay, so I, I, as I say, the, the proof is, uh, is quite easy and quite, I think, uh, understandable. What we do, well, without loss of generality, we can assume that our space is the closed linear span of such a sequence. So this is the basis of, of our space, and we take that injection into LQ. Okay, 
So what we do, we, we denote by, let's say, row and uh, the norms of the, of the restrictions to the tails. And well, this is of course a decreasing sequence because the, uh, the subspaces are increasing, no problem. And we observe that trivially um, the restriction of t uh, to the to the case tail is bounded by, of course, the infimum and and uh, the norm of of itself. So no problem. That's a trivial statement. But uh, well, rho k tends to the infimum because it's a it's a monotone sequence. So without loss of generality, we can assume that our operator is bounded by a pair where this pair is. I mean the 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 fraction of of, of rho uh, the gamma over rho is as close to um, to one as we as we wish, and it's smaller than than one, because because of this convergence business. Trivial, trivial, trivial assertion. Okay, so later we will probably uh, specify the the value of that um, of that fraction, but for now let us just observe that it could be as close to one as we as we like. Okay, so let us give ourselves some room. And let us take some number that is smaller than gamma, but um, maybe, maybe very still, but still very close, uh, making the fraction very close to to one. Okay, and now because we have this room, meaning that the norm of the operator is bigger than that number, we can find uh, a unit vector, let's say, in, in this initial initial segment that makes the norm big. Okay, that's that's that's, that's fair enough. So what we do, we, we proceed recursively and having found, let's say, vectors y1 and y1 and, and yn with the properties that the norm is bigger, uh, I mean the norm of the t applied to such a vector is bigger than that number. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and also because uh, what I want to assure that those vectors I mean the, uh, the 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 evaluation of of t at those vectors are have uh, have disjoint supports, and we can guarantee that by simply demanding that they are finitely finitely supported. So what it means? Well, it means that for some number, well, we will will take the union of the supports, so we will be able to proceed because we assume that the operator is bounded by um, by gamma gamma bar. So we can take a, a tail that does not intersect uh, the supports of those vectors, and we and we keep doing. Okay, fine. So we found another vector, let's say y, y n plus one, with that with that property. But what we've done really is well, we estimate. W what we can do is to well, we can now estimate um, the norm of the plus minus t y n t y k. Well, from the above by rho because rho estimates the norm of t, but we are disjointly supported, so we can compute the norm in, in LQ. However, we, we demanded that this is at least, well, gamma bar times two to uh, one over Q. So um, this constant that I'm about to define formally um, is of this form, but we can demand uh, this fraction gamma over rho to be as close to one as we like, so we are done. We proved that um, that this the, the supremum over those separation constants is two over, is, is at least two over one over q. Okay. So just to explain briefly the, the reduction in this cotype uh, business. So I, I'm I'm referring here to this theorem that if you have finite cotype, then um, you have two to one over cotype minus separated sequence. Actually, you can also include the case when cotype is is infinite. So, um, and in that case, you can use Ries lemma. But um, if X is a, is a sure space, yes. So, um, so weakly uh, weakly convergent sequences converge in norm. Um, then, by Rosenthal's, you can find a copy of L1, and you're done by James norm distortion. So you assume that you, you don't have uh, such a case. Oh, uh, that's most unfortunate. What, what I did. What I did here. So, <laughs> otherwise, um, otherwise you can find a weakly normalized uh, basic sequence, and um, and actually here the assumption of, of having a finite cotype allows you to find a to to, to extract a subsequence that satisfies the lower 
our LR estimate. So this mysterious reference, uh, we couldn't really trace it, so we found it in a book by Petr Hayek and, 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 and Michal Johannes. So it is, it is there if you're interested, but this is pretty standard, although I would appreciate uh, if somebody could tell me what is the, the original reference uh, to this result. So it's pretty standard, so um, everything reduces to, to such sequences and to such sequences that satisfy uh, lower LQ, uh, LQ uh, inequality. So everything is invariant or it does not really uh, depend on, on the norm. So uh, it's, it's, it's renorming invariant. Okay. So how about how about renormings? Well, you can always find a, a renorming that will inflate the distance, uh, and this is quite standard and and not hard to to show. So what you do, you you rely on the fact that you can find a biorhythmal uh, sequence uh, in your space, um, and with that sequence you you define uh, an equivalent norm. First, you put a, you define let's say. Um, for a vector x, you define mu of x to be the, the supremum over those indices that differ. Um, of, I'm not sure if you can see it, but more or less this is where I'm pointing now. Um, and by by orthogonality, um, well, this this the, 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 this original sequence x n uh, will be too separated. So the, the norm that you use is the max of the original norm and this, uh, this quasi-norm, no problem at all. So um, renorming, so, so the interesting question, the, the, the right question to ask is how much can you, um, can you decrease the possible distance? Well, remember that if your space is non-reflexive, then you cannot really go that much down because you have this theorem by Kritschka and Proust where you have this fifth root of four estimation. So, well, probably you, well, not probably you cannot go down arbitrarily close to one but what is the what is the lower bound so um we use a, a notion i think introduced by by jesus castillo and pierluigi papini uh, of a uh, of Kotman constant so uh, what we do we take the, the supremum over separated sequences and then isomorphically, we take the infimum over all renormings. So, well, you could rephrase uh, the theorem by Kritschka and Proust. Well, for, uh, for, for, for a non-reflexive space, um, K tilde of X is at least fifth root of, of four, for example. And then you can introduce all sorts of constants that are related, the so-called finite Kotman constant. So what we do, we, uh, we take the, the supremum of, of sequences, but of finite sequences, um, but with of, of increasing length. So maybe not uh, necessarily realizable in that space, I mean, as, as an infinite sequence, but, um, uh, but in finite pieces, um, maybe there is some uniform bound. We call this finite Kotman constant. For a Banach lattice, well, you could look at uh, disjointly uh, support, well, disjoint uh, sequences. Um, and also you can, you can, you can coin the, the, the symmetric versions as you like. So for C0, um, trivially, the, the, sequence, the, the example I presented is, uh, is two separated. So, uh, so we have this, this symmetric, uh, is isomorphic symmetric uh, constant um, equal to two. Um, for LP, interestingly, also you have two to one over P. Uh, yes, this is what I this is this is what I mentioned. Okay, so far so good. So the aim would be to to try to say something about at least k tilde and ideally about um, k s tilde. Um, Okay, so now, as promised, let me uh, return to the paper by, by Tommaso. So what I really like about, um, about uh, this, this, this paper is this, this beautiful statement that if you go to the ball and you find a weakly null one plus epsilon separated sequence, then you could, what you could do, uh, you could find uh, a square root of one plus, one plus epsilon separated sequence, but in a symmetric way. So you could decrease the, the, the separation constant, but increase the quality of, of, of separation. 
So once you have this, uh, um, I will comment in a moment how to how to get the, the, the result. But in the paper with Petr and, and Tommaso, um, we observe that if you have L1 as a spreading model, then essentially uh, when you fiddle with, let's say, the um, the, the, the version of James non-distortion for spreading models, you can get uh, the symmetric constant uh, of your space uh, to be equal to be equal to. So one would expect, probably, or maybe not, but but initially we expected that. Oh, hold on. So we have also um, non-distortion for C zero. What if you have um, what if you have uh, C zero spreading models? Can you also have uh, such a result. And Tommaso shows remarkably that no, no, not necessarily. So it is possible to have C0 as a spreading model and at the same time to have the, the Kotman constant arbitrarily close uh, to one. Okay, so as a side remark, maybe uh, let me mention uh, a problem that uh, I like. Um, okay, so still in and to some extent, the, the, the proof by, by Tommaso is, is runs a theoretic, but it, is, it uses, let's, let me say, more accessible version of Ramsey theorem there, uh, the, 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 the more standard one. But still, it is, uh, it, it is Ramsey theoretic, so you have some coloring, finitely many colors. But can you do the same, or can you prove the same um, for a complex Banach space? and toroidal separation. So by toroidal, I mean you take everything from the unit circle. So if you have, um, can you find a, a, a toroidally uh, delta separated, uh, well, one plus epsilon separated sequence? Um, that, would be, that would be nice, but that would, I think, require some non-trivial modification of, of either approach uh, because you have to encompass all, uh, everything on the, on the unit circle. Um, so it's definitely, definitely the um, the proofs of um, the of of of, of Starbert of Kotman's theorem, and also the proof uh, that we have in the paper with with Petr and Tommaso, uh, they do not generalize uh, to that to that setting, at least not in a more or less obvious way. Okay, <laughs> let me proceed. So what I'm going to 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 talk about are results from the paper with with Jesus, Manolo, and Pierluigi. Um, so let me, uh, let me start with some preliminary observations. So once you are familiar with the notion of, a, of, a, of an old Banach space ultra power, it becomes trivial by the principle of local reflexivity for ultra powers that the finite Kotman constant of a space is the same as the, as the Kotman constant of the, of the ultra power. So, just appeal to the uh, to, to local reflexivity and and you're done. But um, it may happen that the, the the taking the second dual, where you also have, of course, uh, local reflexivity, will inflate the the I mean the, the the standard Kotman version, not the finite, but the the the, the one that I was I was talking about. And actually, all you have to do is to appeal to this uh, very interesting construction by Belnau of taking a, a, a sum of Banach spaces with respect to, to, to the James space basis, which is not unconditional. So um, there is a little technical problem how to define such a creature. But nevertheless, uh, you could still prove that when you take, when you string together finite dimensional L1 spaces, in the sense of that uh, uh, of that uh, direct infinite direct sum, then um, you can compute you, you can compute the uh, uh, the Kotman constant, or you could argue that it is smaller than two. It is not that hard, essentially, by using the properties of the James space and the fact that you cannot pack everything in a finite dimensional piece. So essentially, they have to be spread out. Uh, so essentially, they have to behave like in the like in the James space. But this space has the property that when you go to the to the bi dual, then this bi dual admits a quotient onto onto L1. So we're actually L1 complemented, but it doesn't matter. 
so because of the fact that in L1 we have constant equal the Kotman constant, the symmetric constant, Kotman constant equal to two, well in the in bidual we have also um, uh, this number as the as the symmetric Kotman constant. So taking the second dual may um, increase the the constant. Okay, so let me start with a very simple uh, observation that relates the Kotman constant of the space and uh, the Kotman constant of the dual. So at least you could say something about the the product of the con of the of the of the constants. So this product is at least um, two, and it's based on a simple application of Ramsey theorem. Uh, I'm I'm very grateful to Benzer who has found um, who's found um, a reference. I think in Thomas' notes. Do I remember Benzer? Do you remember by any chance the title of those notes? I, I know you're here. I think it's Ramsey. No, no, sorry, sorry for. <laughs> I think it's Ramsey theory in Monarch space theory uh, in Monarch spaces or something like that. But it's Thomas Schlumpreich's lecture notes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe maybe Thomas can confirm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but once you have once you have this lemma, uh, the, the proof of the uh, of this uh, estimate is, is is almost trivial. So, um, well, we know that X contains a basic sequence with basic constant at least, at most, one plus something, one plus epsilon. So what we do, we take, we take such a, such a basic sequence and the uh, associated basis functionals. Um, and by, again, by, by orthogonality, well, we have that two is equal to this, um, to the evaluation of those differences on differences by, by orthogonality. So trivially, they um, are bounded by the product of the norms. And now we set our vectors to be X and stars uh, normalized by one plus epsilon. So <clears throat> possibly passing to a subsequence, we use the lemma um, to, to, to ensure that both, both sequences of uh, of differences, they, I mean, and the norms of, of the differences, they converge to some numbers, but now those numbers, <clears throat> they will be bounded by the respective uh, Kotman constants. And because epsilon was arbitrarily small, well, we got the result. So at least we could say <laughs> something um, for, every, for every space. Uh, so it doesn't really depend on the, on the norm. Okay, twisted, twisted sums. Um, just maybe let me state this uh, theorem and return it to it in a, in a second. Um, so for twisted sums, um, so what, 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 what did I mean by this? We embed something, some space Y, to a Banach space X, and we take a quotient by the image, and we call this quotient Z. Okay, so it may or may not split in the sense that Y may be complemented or not, but it doesn't really matter in our setting if it is complemented or not. The Kotman constant of the twisted sum is the max of the respective uh, Kotman constants. Okay, the, the first idea probably would be to, uh, to, to, to play with the banach mazur distance because we have a trivial estimate for, almost trivial estimate for the, for the Kotman constant. Um, so it makes the, the, the Kotman constant continuous with respect to the banach mazur distance, but for our purposes, um, it, is, it is not sufficient. So the main idea is to use, uh, is to use the so-called Cadiz metric. Um, so what, what, is, what does it do to, to Banach spaces? We take all possible isometric embeddings of uh, two Banach spaces, let's say two separable Banach spaces, into a common space. For example, let's say uh, space of continuous functions on the on the unit interval, and then we measure distances um, from the spheres uh, to the images of the uh, sorry from the, to the to the we take the distance from a fixed element from the image of one embedded space. To the to the unit, and we take the supremum over over all points in the in the ball, and because and we do the same in the converse direction, 
So to make it symmetric, well, we take the max, and then we take the inf over all possible isometric embeddings. So it, it, it kind of like gram of distance, but not quite because we are interested only in, in, in linear embeddings. So I want the isometries to, pre to preserve, um, well, to be linear. Yeah, so re it's similar to the gram of distance, but, um, uh, but it is not, but it's extremely useful in our setting because um, we can show that the Cosman constant is continuous, is, is actually Lipschitz continuous with respect to um, the, the so-called gap. Uh, okay, I, I haven't defined the gap. Uh, or <laughs> so maybe let me explain um, what it is. Um, or let me yeah okay the gap okay i forgot to include it in the slides so okay maybe i don't want to 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 torment you with this so it is it is very elementary actually to show that the the Kotman constant is <clears throat> continuous with respect to the <clears throat> sorry to the candidates metric and the same is true for for the other versions of the uh, of the of the constant okay so uh, actually, one what, what, what you show well, there is a relation between this this gap distance and um, and Kotman constant and uh, and Cadiz metric. But um, without the formula, I don't want to, to 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 bother you with this. Okay, sorry about that. And let me and let me proceed. Uh, let me proceed. So uh, twisted sums, twisted sums. Um, well, we have this example, this famous example constructed by, by Colton and, and Peck. So this twisted Hilbert space. So there is a Banach space that is not isomorphic to, um, to a Hilbert space, but it has a Hilbertian subspace such that when we quotient by that subspace, we also have a, we also have a Hilbert space. <clears throat> but there is no canonical norm on that space. Why? Because it is defined quite abstractly by uh, well, Colton's machinery of, of, of quasi-linear maps. So what we do, we take a quasi-linear map um, defined by this formula, x, oh, I, I thought there will be no logarithm because some students don't like logarithms, so sorry, sorry about that. We have a logarithm. Um, so there is this quasi-linear map and using that map, we define a quasi-norm on, on, on sequences where, where this is finite, where this makes sense. And this quasi-norm introduces some topology. And the, the hard part of the proof was to show that when you take the, the convex hull of the, of the unit ball uh, with respect to the quasi-norm, then it gives you uh, uh, a Banach space topology by using the Minkowski functional. But this norm is not explicit at all. We don't, we, we don't know how to compute it. So for that reason, we don't care too much about this a specific norm, but only what it does to our space. It, it makes this, this phenomenon of, of, of existing of, of a short exit sequence of Hilbert spaces that, um, that does not split. So in general, well, we cannot say anything about the norm. So let us try to say something about all the norms at once on that space. So, well, let me recall this result about um, about Kotman constant of 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 of, of, of um, short exact sequences of, of twisted sums. Well, we have this. So let me uh, briefly uh, explain uh, what is inside of that proof. So. Uh, of course, there is no no problem with assuming that we already start with a um, with a renormed space. So yeah, we can renorm. Uh, we can pretend that it is that this uh, constant is, is is achieved. So we treat it as a as a as genuine Kotman constant of of the of renorming. So what we do again, I have to appeal to this gap distance, but think of this gap distance as the candidates uh, metric between, between the spaces. So we have the, the distance between um, any spaces to be, uh, to be bounded by two times gap, but two times candidates. So what we do, we form the direct sum, the L1 direct sum 
of y and z. But for L1 direct sum, life is easy. I mean, for L1 um, to, to arrive at this, it is more or less obvious. So um, this, this L1 sum is a subspace of x plus uh, z. Okay, so now what we do, we, 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 we decrease epsilon and form a subspace using um, the quotient map. I mean, the quotient from x onto z, call it q. So here we, we, we form those, uh, those, this, this x epsilon space, um, which is a subspace of x plus uh, z in the L1 sense. Okay, and now what we do, uh, we appeal to, to a result uh, from a paper by Mihai Ostrovsky that when we pass to the limit, everything is, is, is fine. So here we, we rely actually on, on Mihail's uh, work, um, and not only here. So <laughs> this is the first mention of, of Mihail here in, in, in my talk. Um, yeah, I don't want to go too much into details, just wanted to give you uh, information about uh, machinery um, we are using. So after all, the result is not that esoteric because at the end of the day, we still reduce everything to, to the L1 sum of two banner spaces. That's the moral, that's the moral of, that, of that story. So it is reducible to, to L1s. Okay, so complex interpolation. I think this is uh, my last slide I would, like to, I would like to talk about and then maybe some general comments. Um, well, uh, Nigel and, and, and Mihai Wilstrowski proves that the metric is continuous with respect to, to interpolation parameter. So when you do complex interpolation of Banach spaces, you have an explicit formula on the dependence of the of the index of the indices um, and the the the, the caddies, uh, distance between the the interpolated spaces and a function of, of t and s. So a very explicit formula. Well, so then you can derive a, a corollary that because uh, because uh, the caddies the Kotman constant is two Lipschitz with respect to caddies, so you multiply this result by four and you pretend to be happy. But it doesn't really tell you too much about, um, about uh, um, the interpolated spaces. It tells you something, but not too much. So if you assume that you do interpolation, uh, complex interpolation for, uh, for spaces such that um, the, 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 the interpolation couple is, is regular in the sense that the intersection in this joint, in, in this, ambient uh, topological vector space is, is dense in both spaces, then actually you can, you can do something and you can estimate uh, the Kotman constant. So it is like uh, sub, uh, sub convex, yes. Um, so we show that if you go uh, uh, a little bit far away from, from, the, from the endpoints, um, then you have this very nice behavior of the, uh, let's say, of the convex, uh, of the convex uh, combination of the, um, of the new shrunk endpoints and, um, and Kotman constants of, uh, of the respective spaces XA and XB. So they, uh, they depend on, on, on theta explicitly. So, that's that that's good because well at least we can we can say something uh, in that setting although um, we are not sure if we can improve it or not so there was a disagreement whether uh, the, the the statement is, is true if we take a equal zero and b equal one and um, but we we didn't reach a conclusion and there was time actually to submit a. Uh, well, to 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 submit uh, a corrected version to the journal. Well, we stated it like this, and I, I must say I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced by the heuristics proposed by uh, some subset of the, of the authors. Okay, so we have um, we have this result for for interpolation spaces. Um, so what to do next? Well, as I said, uh, to me. The, the the two open problems that I find uh, very appealing um, are these. Uh, well, where are we? Uh, can you prove uh, 
yes, can you prove, uh, can you improve uh, this constant for, for non-reflexive spaces? So an idea, how would, you, how would you prove it, for example, or improve it possibly, would be to find, uh, to find some dense, so take, a, take, a, take the Borel space of, uh, of, of separable Banach spaces, and actually you can put it, uh, you, you, can, you can define a, a, a topology, Polish topology, uh, there is a recent paper by uh, Gilles Godefroy and, and Saint Raymond where they study topolo Polish topologies on on, uh, on separable Banach spaces. And what you could do, you could, for example, try to improve uh, this estimate in a subset of non-reflexive spaces and kind of try to pass to a closure by making sure that um, the, um, the 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 Kotman constant is is continuous on that set. So that's a that's a speculation, but this is how I would see a, a possible possible improvement. So pick a class where you probably have a better estimate. So the, the, I think the main problem is to find a suitable class or spaces, because well we know it cannot be two. Um, otherwise, I don't have any good even uh, candidates for for that number. So that, that, that's one problem. And can you prove a symmetric version? So can you find a, a uni, so can you find a, a uniform bound lower bound for the for 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 symmetrically separated sequences in non-reflexive uh, Banach spaces? And of course, you can combine these two. Maybe you can find a better estimate in the symmetric version. That would be something. And uh, also uh, this. Uh, this Elton O'Dell in the complex setting. Um, so can you, uh, can you, can you, uh, in the complex setting, can you find a uh, toroidally separated uh, one plus, well, toroidally one plus epsilon separated sequence in every um, complex Banach space. So um, I think that I'm about to finish because I, I saved four minutes on not discussing the relations between gap the gap distance and the candidate distance and one of the proofs. Um, and also, um, I decided not to not to talk about every single um, result in, in either paper. So if you find this this topic interesting, I let me simply make an advertisement and point you and refer you to, to, to either paper. So uh, there is there is some stuff related to Banach lattices to uh, to disjoint Kotman constant um, and so on. So I think uh, let me start five minutes uh, earlier before, before, and I think this is the right moment to stop. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, people, you can turn on your uh, your videos, and maybe uh, Tomic, you turn off the. Uh, or actually, maybe let's let's keep it for the questions. So, are there any questions? Yeah, uh, uh, this is Timur. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, hi, hi, Tomek. Uh, thank you very much for a nice talk. Could you could you repeat the reference for what happens for, for the like the disjoint Kotman for the Banach lattices? Oh yeah, okay. So okay, okay. So so this is this paper uh, with with Jesus Manolo and Pierluigi. So the, one of the main res one of the main results concerning the disjoint Kotman constant is that still it it could increase when you go to the bidual. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any others? Sorry, if you go to the Kurter by dual, even so, that's even more restrictive. So if you if you work with Kurter spaces. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. So thank you, to make for your nice talk. And I have no idea if my comment will be interesting or is complete crap or whatever, uh, but. Um, I think that my Kotman constant greater or equal than uh, some fixed some fixed constant. Uh, it's a sigma one one property. Mm -hmm. you I think your, my, your, my your microphone is not, no. Can you check your microphone? Okay. No, I, I can't really hear you. Is, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me. Okay. I'm trying to stay close to my microphone. It's not bad. Okay. It's not good. 
So, having Kutman constant greater than A for some fixed constant A, uh, it's a sigma 1 1 property. Uh, so, we can imagine, I don't know if it's interesting or complete trap, but you could uh, define an ordinal index for this property. So, you look at the, at the tree of uh, finite sequences that are A separated, and you look at its height. Uh, if, uh, you have, if, if you have Kutman constant, uh, strictly uh, below A, uh, then this tree will be uh, well funded, so you will have uh, you will have uh, eight, which will be uh, below omega one. Uh, I don't know if it's good enough to, to improve uh, uh, to, to prove that uh, yeah, to prove some inequalities about Kutman constants uh, by replacing embeddings by some kind of partial embeddings or whatever. So just an idea like that. I have no idea if it's Work on okay. Uh, okay. No, thanks. I only uh, I only heard half of your question, but I, I, I'll okay, try sorry. to get. Well, I, I'll try to guess what you meant. So, um, so the question is if if we know whether there is some projective um, complexity of, of spaces of the of of what? Uh, I, I can try to write it. Or, or, um, yeah. Yeah. Sure. If you can, if, if you can write it or uh, yeah. something like that, if we can do that or. But then uh, I think what you're suggesting is to, to embed something partially and look at finite sequences to get uh, like an infinite sequence. Well, in general, uh, this finite Kotman constant could be strictly smaller than um, than the, 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 the usual Kotman constant. So in general, probably by using, by, by looking at, at finite sequences is, is, is not sufficient. If you are connecting your audio uh, phone, just connect with audio and use the audio from phone. That might help. Yeah, yeah. And, that's what and, I'm and this disable the audio on this one. So while yeah. you do that, we can take other questions, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes. Any other questions or comments? So I'm looking at the chat. There are several comments. I look at the chat. Um, oh, how do I do? Most ah, of yes. them, most of them are, I think, some uh, sort of easy comments. I don't think there are any questions there. I connect my phone. Can you give me the ID, please? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the, the the ID is uh, this this one. Okay, so you gave it too much credit. It's a trivial observation using compactness. I agree. So I'm I'm typing right now. Okay, so. <laughs> This was me. I think it's kind yes. of silly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it was a class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, but th sorry, Thomas. I've never seen this reference anywhere before. Just your lecture notes. Really. Yeah. Okay. But in some sense, it's really yeah. <laughs> Isn't it just a Ramsey yeah. argument, though? Is it just yeah, a standard exactly. Ramsey argument? Yeah. yeah, okay. If you have a bounded, a bounded double index sequence in, in R, you can find a sub array which has a limit, right? I mean, yep. diagonal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a yeah, diagonalization for two. Yeah, for, that's actually, you don't even need Ramsey. It's simply a diagonal argument. Oh, okay. Yes. So no, maybe you could you could send me that question by email. I think then I yeah, have that, a chance that'll be, to, to, to think about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there are no others, so uh, thank you so much, uh, Tomek, for a beautiful talk. So let's thank, thank our you. speaker. And yeah. so you can turn off the screen share, and people, you can just turn on your uh, video and start chatting. Uh, so the plan is we can chat a little bit, and at the end I will go through this uh, connecting iPad thing. I'll, I'll try to show that. I, I tried to do it uh, last week, but we didn't have the correct uh, setup. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have uh, I have a question. I mean, not this iPad, but uh, okay. I now bought this notability. Yeah. And. Uh, so I know now how to download the talk, uh, like a boomer, a beamer talk, and I also know how to write on it. But yeah. is it okay? So can I share my screen with you for a moment? Sure. And then you tell me whether I can do something better than 
what I got. Okay, I'll is, actually show that. So how, how about people chat a little bit now and then uh, after maybe five, 10 minutes, uh, we'll go over that. How about that? Yeah, okay. So I, I, I will actually demonstrate uh, this whole thing from yeah. the beginning. So how's my name? Yeah. So yeah, so it's the social hour now. So how is everybody doing? <laughs> Well, okay. So tonight, and 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 the wife. So okay. I managed to connect my phone. I can actually ask my question. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Properly. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I don't so know actually, if the speaker might refuse to answer your question, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. As you want no, no, to make. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, so my question was actually, uh, you don't look just at, fin at finite sequences, but for example, uh, for a certain fixed A, uh, you looked at the tree of sequences uh, such that, that are separated by more than A. And this tree can either be ill-founded, uh, in which case the Kotman constant is greater than A, or it's well-founded, and then it has an ordinal index. So you could you could look at the alpha Kotman constant for any alpha uh, less than omega one. Your finite Kotman constant would be the Kotman constant for uh, omega, and uh, I don't know if it would be worse anything or not. But I wonder if it could help uh, to if you could, for example, get inequality, get um, uh, get minoration, get lower bounds uh, using overspill arguments or something like that. You know. Aha, uh -huh, okay. I have it no idea. It never occurred to me, no. And you mentioned something about projective sets, if I... Yeah, what I mentioned is that uh, basically the fact that uh, you can do this trick with, this trick with trees, etc., is linked to the fact that uh, having cost, Kotman constant greater than A is a sigma 1-1 one, one property. Aha, uh -huh, okay, I see, okay. That's just what I was saying, yeah. It was not very really important. No, that's definitely an interesting idea. Never occurred to me. We could think about it if you like. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. <laughs> okay, so I guess the, the awkward uh, thing is how <laughs> how do you initiate a conversation? Yeah, well, just just jump in. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to say. <laughs> with, with, with 40 people, yeah. yes? I'm still recording, so 